Hi, I'm Rick Pendleton, and welcome to this video on how to make the world's greatest cowboy ribeye steak. Now, I am passionate about cooking, and I spent the last two years developing a system for making the cowboy ribeye steak. And you can do this in your kitchen, on your grill, and in your own home. You wanna do it? Let's get started. First off, what is a cowboy ribeye? Well, a cowboy ribeye is a supersized steak. These cowboy ribeyes here are two and a half pounds each. Also, you notice cowboy ribeye has a bone in. The bone in allows for more flavor. And the ribeye cut is the most juicy and tender part of the steak family here. Okay, is red meat uh, good for you? There's been a lot of people having opinions on red meat. Uh, according to research from the Annals of Internal Medicine, they did a multi-country study. Their PhD panel experts suggest that adults continue current unprocessed red meat consumption. Okay, I'm gonna do that. So how about we have a cowboy ribeye, but we just don't have one every day. Well, how do you know how to pick the best quality meat to, make, to pick your steak? All right, the United States Department of Agriculture, the USDA gives three choices for meat quality. Prime, which is the best, choice in the middle, and select at the bottom. These steaks here are choice, by the way. So what's the big deal with the meat? Marbling. Uh, higher end steaks have more marbling. And marbling is the fat that is inside the meat. More marbling equals more flavor. And again, I purchased these, these steaks at Stater Brothers here in Los Angeles. I think for the money, it's the best deal you're gonna get for quality and cost. Now, what's next? We are gonna make a wet rub. And a wet rub is basically olive oil and a bunch of spices that you're gonna coat your steak with to add more flavor. So what's in my wet rub? Well, I got olive oil. Montreal steak seasoning, ground pepper, garlic salt, and a little splash of cayenne pepper. But the secret ingredient is paprika. Now paprika does two things, adds flavor, but also it helps create a beautiful char around your steak. You're gonna take this wet rub and you're gonna push it all over the steak. You're gonna really use your hands and force it in. You're gonna force the flavors in and you're gonna coat the whole steak, uh, the entire steak, so when you, it's on every part of the steak. Now, once you finish the wet rub, you're gonna let your steak sit for one hour and come to room temperature. Why is that? Well, steaks cook better when they're at room temperature. Room temperature at the grill makes a better cooking steak. Okay, let's talk about something really important just for a second here. When you're cooking at home, you gotta be careful of one thing, cross-contamination. Okay, what is cross-contamination? According to the USDA, Cross-contamination is the transfer of harmful bacteria to food or other foods. This is especially true when handling raw meat. So for example, translation, every time I touch raw meat, I finish, I wash my hands in hot soapy water. Also, any utensils I use to touch raw meat, like chicken, poultry, or steak, I put those utensils right away in the dishwasher. Then I take a second set of utensils and knives out to prepare the rest of the meal. Okay, now we're ready to put the steak on the grill. But cooking your steak is very important. Here's what we're gonna do. Number one, we're gonna sear the outside. Number two, we're gonna cook with indirect heat. Let's look at number one first. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your steak, you're gonna put it on the grill, bam, two minutes and 30 seconds. Then you're gonna open the grill up, turn your steak 90 degrees, bam, two minutes and 30 seconds, okay? At five minutes, you're gonna flip your steak over, 230, 230. Okay, now you seared the outside of the steak and all those juices are sealed inside. But the inside is not cooked properly yet. How are we gonna do that? I'm gonna tell you right now. You're gonna use indirect heat to cook the middle of the steak and bring it to the proper temperature. Here's how you do it. I have a two burner uh, grill right here. What I do is I turn this side of the grill off. I leave the flame on this side on. I put the steak on the grill part that's off and I let the indirect heat slowly bring the steak to room, up to, excuse me, to the perfect temperature. We're aiming for 129 degrees um, as our goal here. 129 will give us a perfect uh, pink in the middle and uh, well done on the outside. Let me catch up here. But how do I know when the middle is done? Okay, you gotta get one of these. It's a meat thermometer. The meat thermometer is used to exactly measure the internal temperature of the steak. So I put this in there and when it hits 129, I know the steak is done. Next. You take the steak off the grill and you're gonna let it rest for 10 minutes. Why do you let it rest? Well, the steak's juices gotta kinda of readjust in the steak. They gotta move around so it's moist inside, okay? So after 10 minutes, um, 
you're gonna you're ready to serve your steak. Now here's last trip of the day and my pro tip of the week. When I was at the Bondi Steak Beach House outside Sydney, they did something interesting. They brought out my steak and it was sliced in pieces. And I thought, wow, what a great idea. So what I do, and I have guests, I bring the steak out sliced. Then I ask my guests, because this, if you notice, it's well on the outside, rare on the inside, out to well. I ask guests, how do you like your steak? Medium rare? Boom! How do you like your steak? Well done? Boom! That's the way we do it, so everybody gets a perfect cooked steak at their temperature they like. All right. Well, that wraps up our show. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I've shown you how to purchase a steak, what type of meat to get, how to cook your steak and season it. Now, I hope you enjoy eating it. Thanks for watching. I'm Rick Pendleton. And by the way, special thanks to Miguel Medina, my cameraman.